shared with you earlier, and now I get to tell you about the work in our community as being part of that initiative. Okay, so um, this uh, presentation was given in early form in North Carolina. That's how um, Stephanie and I actually linked up, and then I learned about this opportunity. So um, that was a smart growth perspective. And, you know, there's a lot of overlap between health and planning and public works and park and rec. So it was a good attempt to uh, talk about our story to improve public safety in six neighborhood public spaces in Western Chula Vista community. Now, um, part of what I'll be covering today as part of this in-depth presentation is to showcase crime prevention through environmental design efforts from a community building perspective and a social justice perspective. Also to highlight in depth the linkage between public health and public safety. Also to showcase traditional and non-traditional partnerships to create a community change which is sustainable. And also to share next steps and lessons learned as a result of using the SEPTED strategy or crime prevention through environmental design. So I work in Chula Vista. Chula Vista is uh, 49 square miles, located in the south part of San Diego County. It's a population of about 230,000 folks. Um, right through the middle of the community is the 805 freeway. Okay, and um, to the east uh, is more affluent master plan community, and to the west, where our project is focused, is um, a lower socioeconomic uh, population, uh, older stock community. Some parts of that community have been um, identified for redevelopment, and that's specifically what kind of gives us hope that things will be upgraded. And so the National Convergence Partnership um, represents a group of foundations who are willing to explore this uh, nexus between safety and violence prevention and the obesity epidemic. And it involves uh, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Nemours, Kellogg, California Endowment, Kaiser Permanente National Community Benefit. And like I said earlier, we have the pilot projects with my colleagues in Louisville, Kentucky, Denver, Colorado, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Oakland, California, um, and Chula Vista. And one of the um, undercurrent elements is to get people to work together. Again, an obesity prevention partner, youth at the table, community-based organizations that represent um, interest in obesity prevention work, violence prevention work, and you have the health agency at the table. And so our target community was Western Chula Vista. And what we did was we took this um, SEPTED methodology and we assessed two parks, uh, one, the area around one problem neighborhood apartment complex and three trolley stations, kind of as our attempt to bring that public health, public safety discussion to multi multiple jurisdictions. Okay, so um, these are examples of public health focused strategies. And I love my colleagues in public health is kind of what I'm trained in. But the fact is that even though these policies I feel are extremely far reaching and brilliant, that it doesn't resonate with the public. Okay, and that's just something that I, I flat out have learned after 15 years doing this work. Okay, so let's, the crime prevention through environmental design thing is like a focused strategy to help people identify what their concern is, is and diplomatically state what the solution could be. And that's from folks that commonly do not engage in government. So again, um, safety is at, at the forefront with this crime prevention through environmental design and approaching assessments of neighborhood public safe, uh, public spaces and safety concerns, we use it as, a, as an intermediate step to actually then realize more about the socio-ecological model of public health and how the, the environment supports or undermines people's ability to be healthy. So we just put the crime prevention thing first and then we realize more later. So. There's not much to crime prevention through environmental design. I mean, there's a first and second generation I could get into it. I'm trained. Uh, I do workshops on this. Um, but the fact is that it's clear. It's clear how people can use it. It's clear how um, people could use this as a framework for um, eloquently stating what should happen in communities in, in order to improve neighborhood environments. So it's about people people talking about how they can easily get in and out of a place, to easily survey a place, to show that they own a place, to maintain a place. And when you hear a young person or a community adult that you've ne never seen before come from the neighborhood and use that as their framework for communicating to police, to council members, this, that, and other, the fact is, is it's powerful. 
crime prevention through environmental design is nothing new. It's actually initiated out of, uh, across the world in different countries. The, but the difference is that around the world, it's enacted by communities. Communities own the process. They drive the process. Here in the U.S., it's mostly law enforcement driven. And we, as part of our project, have brought in more public input to the process and developed that unity between the community and the public sector. So Jane Jacobs, one of the founders of SEPTA, said that um, public space is intended for human integration, not isolation. But the fact is, in underserved communities, low-income communities, there's a lot of isolation. And a lot of that has to do with the fear of safety in communities. And so, you know, the, this is kind of what we're up against uh, in um, low-income communities of color, the presence of toxins, pollutants, less playgrounds, disproportionate share of liquor stores, libraries are scarcer, uh, uh, unstable housing, fast food everywhere, no, no healthy food anywhere, and there's violence on the street. And so digging down deeper, um, I've been working in Chula Vista for 10 years and developed some really, really strong relationships. And one of them was with the, cr the crime analyst for the city of Chula Vista. And I went to his boss and to the two lieutenants and I said, can I have three years worth of data? And after I uh, talked about this project and our intent, and uh, they realized over time how public input is a necessity to make communities safer, they gave me these maps, which justified why we should focus in this way. So we went to two uh, parks, uh, three trolley stations, and an area around the St. Regis apartment complex, which has a lot of problems. So I'm going to just give you a sense of the data, right? So this is just general disorder, hot spots. And you can see some of the places that we uh, have focused on. So this is general disorder, 2009. This is general tra traffic. And this is general violence, right? So just being based in data and showing the kids this, we just knew that we were doing the right thing. So let me, um, the, the study is powerful because it's, um, uh, it's 500 photos taken by kids and parents. and. We took all of that information and distilled it down to a 136-page report of photos on the six sites with recommendations um, about the site, improving the site from a crime prevention through environmental design standpoint, and looking at the broader community, therefore edifying people's um, realization about environmental change and how the environment surrounding could contribute to those problems at the uh, target locations. So this is a lot of Bach Park. After two rounds of assessment and discussions with the kids and the parents, we were able to solicit you know, one to two rounds of input. Sometimes the people didn't talk, but what they wrote was incredible. So they wrote these concerns, and I was able to just go through these stacks of paper and just solicit, okay, Lauterbach Park is generally not safe. Boys and Girls Club has been vacant since 2008. Homeless transient population, you know, the, this is alcohol consumption in the park, that's, that's a barrier, okay? So then we... Um, these slides kind of denote what the concern, concerns were. We have a ton of photos, but like, here's one photo, here's the concern, here's the words of the young people, here's the recommendation. And this has been explained over and over again. And so the entrance of the park, you know, you go in, but on the other side of the bathroom, this is what you see. When you approach the homeless population, you don't know what to expect. That's one of our um, people. And then they have the crime prevention through environmental design uh, recommendations. And so these are other things. The photos don't tell lies. The photos put the issues out there, right? And so you go to different parts of the uh, park, and people are using the bathroom outdoors. And then you go inside the bathroom and you, or out on the bench, and, like, this is what you see. This is what causes people not to want to come there. Again, inside the bathroom. So people drinking at night in the park. So um, let's increase police surveillance to enforce alcohol ordinance. And so one of the things that I loved about this process outside of the public participation and the fact that we got the young people involved, it wasn't a lot of young people, it was like 20 people that moved mountains, right? So we're on the west side, so now I'm going to take you and I'm going to take some pictures of what the east side looks like. So this is about equity, right? So we can already see from this photo given to me by redevelopment, you can see the coordination and the trust between us a lot of cities don't like to tell bad stories, but if we're going to work in the right direction, they're transparent with the information. So the green area right there is green space. And then 
the side, the other side is where we work. So you can see the disparity there. And so they have parks with uh, wonderful designs of kids, sculptures in it. Uh, bathrooms look better than some homes on the west side. Nice prominent signage. You can see a child from a long distance. Um, they have water fountains, which is a high commodity on the west side. And then, you know, they have uh, man-made uh, water features. And that's my child. She works with me sometimes. So what do we feel is possible trying to make it clear for the council members and the public work staff about, you know, what can we get on the west side? We can have some concerts in the park. Why don't we take, why don't we respect the culture of the people that live in this particular area? I looked at this one in Oakland. I was on my way to a meeting, and that's actually a dragon in Chinatown. Then we went to St. Regis Apartments, and we had similar concerns, high traffic, visible blight, evidence of gangs and disorder, high number of entrapment sites, and businesses in the surrounding area noted concern. And so this is an area adjacent to, to just to the north of St. Regis Apartment Complex, again, noting the concern, noting the recommendation. And then we can see that there's still a divide and things that we need to work on racially. And then uh, there's sexist statements as well. Massive amounts of graffiti, very offensive. These types of property crimes screams out the division that exists in our community. Again, providing the recommendation. And then these are the entrapment areas. You know, if you, I know the city budgets are tight, but you can at least like cut the shrubs so that people, you know, don't get robbed. And then, you know, you look at the land use decisions. So, you know, you got the barbershop, the tattoo parlor and the liquor store right on the same block. And so, you know, we might want to separate that in the future. This, this teaches us or at least engages in dialogue about these land use uh, patterns. So what can we do? We know we don't have a lot of space, but we could at least get a pocket park. We could paint utility boxes. It says here, utility boxes are another favorite of graffiti vandals. Many communities have worked with local artists and residents to paint the boxes with colorful design, which not only deter graffiti, but also brighten up the area. These are some examples in North Park, San Diego, Chula Vista, Bankers Hill, San Diego. Some of these projects are really nice. And then you could also have murals. This is Logan Heights. I live in National City, but just to the north of me, is uh, this is downtown Logan Heights. And then I also live by here, which is South Crest, Southeast San Diego. And, and um, this actual place before it was a mural, all it did have was just gang tagging. And they took graffiti abatement money to commission three artists to put up this wonderful design, and I've only seen it tagged once. And that was really um, an allowance that the artist and the neighborhood gang had coming to consensus to say, okay, you'll get your respect. So they have a little design in it, um, which signifies that. So then, taking the public health and safety discussion to three trolley uh, stations, we started at Palomar, and it just graffiti and tagging. You know, same, same gangs and their vandalism. Uh, pro property promotes a lack of safety. And then vandalism. And then uh, sometimes you can't use an ATM machine, so you got to go to the food for less and get cash out to get your ticket. And then there's homeless transient population in there. It's not a problem, but they need some services, and we have to... Um, we, we have to put these issues out there because if not, we play like it doesn't exist. And so, you know, here are some issues that we could see. Again, the photos don't lie. They tell you that they're drinking in the park or in the, in the parking lot. There's unhealthy food access. There's no water in the vending machines. Um, people that walk to the trolley probably don't want to walk by this. There's periodicals in there that are pornographic magazines, sexual exploitation. Um, the, the shiniest things that we see at every trolley station are, are these soda machines, and uh, on top of that is the billboard saying, Go Gamble. And I've been at night. One of the realest things that I was able to do this time was just go by myself, not with the kids, but just, you know, in civilian attire. And this is kind of what I, I witnessed at all the sites alcohol consumption, harassment of women, bullying, aggressive behavior, and then there was poor lighting. Like, I couldn't see a face at 50 feet. So these are just some examples of what we want to see and uh, projects that were done in close proximity to our community with art. And, you know, so we have a really uh, good process for engaging the community to develop reports like this. It's a powerful um, one, two, three, four, five, six-step process 
And so we developed a report. And ever since we de developed the report, um, which came out at the end of the summer, we've just been speaking and sharing and tailoring our discussions to the Park and Rec Commission, elected officials, Cultural Arts Commission, Southwest Working Group, Metropolitan Transit Systems. We've done park cleanups, et cetera. We just, this right here, that's, that's evidence of me actually presenting with the young people to the law, law enforcement task force. With, and the kids get out there and they say it. They do this presentation with me. And what they say and their buy-in to the process is phenomenal. And so we got correspondence letters about what changed because, of, of course, you need evaluation to prove it. So uh, Chula Vista Police Department, they said, wow, this report puts everybody on the same page. We're going to create this Palomar uh, Business Watch program to improve surveillance at Harborside Park. Public Works said, okay, we're in a budget crisis, but we'll at least cut down the bushes at Lauterbach Park and Harborside Park. And then the Park and Rec guy, he said, wow, you know, I've had a 45% reduction uh, in our budget in three years. But you know what? Since you're so good going to get grants, why don't you help us to get grant money for sustaining our programs? And then redevelopment, you know, those are my guys because they said, okay, you put up at least 15000 we'll, we'll put your project with the redevelopment bundle and get these utility boxes painted in the target area where there's prevalent violence concerns. So we got council approval, and we're moving forward with that. Probably if, you, if I go to the presentation at San Diego of Smart Growth, I'll be able to share what this looks like, and it's a self-guided walking tour brochure commemorating the 100th anniversary of Chula Vista's existence. But what really was deep to me is the metropolitan transit system. They just went down each element of the report. Vandalized business, uh, benches removed. Graffiti removed. Recommendation to ban alcohol at the trolley stations. Develop a permitting process for newspapers and magazines to potentially regu regulate payment. Requested vendor to stock more juice and water. Recommended that vending machines and other station amenities are placed such that to discourage entrapment areas, and then they're rebuilding the whole blue line going down from uh, central San Diego to uh, Tijuana. And this is a CDC slide. This is just kind of how we're going to evaluate ourselves. The last two um, bullets are, are what you know I'm able to do through this presentation, but the fact is we're going to tell this story in a videography documentary. And so we have existing partnership and we have future partnerships. We're about to do art as violence prevention. So. There's artists, art commission, school districts, and volunteers that come together in the next month are going to be our new partners. And so the pictures don't lie. Even if nothing happened, we still have a baseline about what can change in our community, and it increases accountability. And community residents can do this. So I got this quote. Um, Before you are a leader, success is about growing yourself. But when you become a leader, success is about growing others. So in terms of communities putting prevention to work, our entity CHIP is taking this last 15 years experience and developing into a resident leadership academy. So it's 10 sessions, uh, social determinants of health, healthy food systems, uh, community building principles, land use community planning, um, how to write an effective action plan, create benchmarks, Present it to the community. By session 10, we'll have an action plan. We'll work with four communities, Lemon Grove, uh, Oceanside, National City, and Southeast San Diego to enact a community-driven process that will get to uh, some outcomes related to public safety, increasing healthy food access, and physical activity opportunities. And so um, that process was just initi initiated in Oceanside. Uh, last Wednesday night, we had our first session, and we got a wonderful group, and I can't wait for them to be our co-presenters in the next round. Any questions? All right. Thank you. And, you know, I was very excited to see you including that in, in your presentation. Um, how did you come about identifying the street harassment for women, of women? And when we talk about these safe streets, oftentimes in planning, you never hear about making it safe for the women and the children in our communities. 